Again, we are in Acts uh, chapter 18. I'm going to read verses 1 through 18. I'm going to ask you to rise to your feet as we pay tribute to the reading of God's Word. Acts 18, 1 through 18, this is the second missionary journey of Paul, and he, he ends up leaving Athens, coming to Corinth. That's where we are right now. Verse 1 says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to, to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews be expelled out of Rome. That's what was happening there. Uh, the Jews be depart, departed from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus, Timothy, were come from Macedonia, if you remember, he left them behind in Macedonia, Paul was pressed in his spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go into the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered to a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house was right next to the house joined the synagogue. It was right next to the synagogue. And Crispus, who was in charge of the synagogue, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians heard, hearing believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in, in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gallio was uh, the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuaded men to worship God, Contrary to our law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look you to it, for I will not, or I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Jews took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence unto Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Caesarea, for he had a vow. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. What can we get by the method of Paul? Let's look at it tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. And God, we see the success of Paul. And at Corinth, he was able to stay there for 18 months. And God done a mighty work there. There were many that were saved there. And, and God, the method that he used. And, and God, the leading of the Holy Spirit is something that we should look at. And that we could study tonight. And, and, and God, that we can glean much from it. And so tonight, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that as we've looked at the limits of time that Paul had in Athens, uh, he is now in Corinth doing a mighty work. God in an economic center of Greece, in a place that was hustling and bustling, but yet known for immorality. Matter of fact, it becomes important to, to Paul to focus his ministry as an apostle in this place. Why? Because it was needed. God, just be with us, watch over, care for, and keep us. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, Paul, every way he preached, revival or riot every time that Paul preached. And so we find, remember he was at Athens and he uh, uh, told them about the, the idol that they had been, to, been built to the unknown God. And, and, and listen, they had come from a, a Thessalonica and tried to stir up the crowd. Men did and tried to stir up the crowd. And Paul had to leave there. And he didn't accomplish all that he wanted to. And he didn't accomplish as much as he would have liked to. But he leaves there now and he gets to Corinth. Let's look at Paul's arrival because there's some things that we can glean from Paul's arrival at, at, at Corinth. Now, one of the things, one of the things I want you to notice about Paul is this. Is that Paul had made a commitment to live uh, on missions, not only by himself, uh, but with others. Paul had, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, he had Timothy on, on his side. He had, he had 
had Silas and he had others there that had committed to the ministry. And so Paul understood that this thing was bigger than just Paul. This ministry that he was doing went beyond one certain city. And if he got run out of that city, he'd just go to the next city. And, and so uh, his mission field was not contained by, by a particular place where he lived. Uh, as he's traveling on these missionary journeys, uh, every city that he comes to, he comes there and he shares in the synagogue. Again, I share with you that Paul found it important to be in church. And so uh, every time he gets into these uh, cities, he, he, he has committed himself uh, to live on this mission of God to share the gospel but I want you to see that Paul was not above uh, having those that would come in and help him that would come alongside him and help him in this endeavor Paul was not in this by himself matter of fact the Bible says here that he met to uh, that he, he, he literally comes to uh, Corinth there and he meets uh, a two he meets uh, one that is named Aquila and one that's named Priscilla. Now here's what I want you to see in this, and God works this away. Now we may have Lowry Town Baptist Church on the side or on the front of the building, whatever the case may be, but we're all in the same thing together. It doesn't matter what the name is, what matters is, is the journey that we're taking together. Life is a journey, no doubt. We're getting from point A to point B. And what Paul found was that in his journey, he wanted to share his journey, not only his life with others, but he wanted others to share their life with him. And, and so uh, he, he befriends these two, uh, uh, Aquila and Priscilla. And, and, and I want you to see this, that, that you and I could say the same thing. Listen, some of us here tonight are the Aquila and Priscilla. Some of us are the Pauls in this place. But at the end of the day, all of us is on this shared journey together with life, doing life together here in this place. And so it wasn't just uh, them two. We, we find that, you know, Timothy comes and Silas comes. And, and so Paul really had uh, this supportive group uh, uh, that, that, that was there with him. Matter of fact, on this shared journey that they had, because the Bible says this, not only did he meet them there, but you mean the last verse we read that when Paul leaves uh, uh, from there and he's traveling to Syria, uh, Aquila and Priscilla goes with him. And so they continue on this journey with Paul. Uh, matter of fact, it is Aquila and Priscilla that, that, that really leads Apollos to, uh, to the Lord. And so uh, we, we find in this, this shared journey. Uh, I want us to be mindful tonight of this shared journey. I, I want us to think about how we're doing life together and how we can build each other up and edify and do life together. And, and that God has seen fit for us to be here at this time, at this appointed time, and this appointed place. And we've come tonight. Even in this time that we spend here tonight, we've come tonight. And, and, and what God has got, got us here in our shared journey. And, and so for Paul, it was no different. Paul was willing to share his life and, and the journey of life with those that he would come in contact with. Now, uh, here's the thing. We find, that we know that Paul was Jewish, and we know that Aquila and Priscilla had been expelled from Rome because there was an edict to get rid of all the Jews out of Rome. And so uh, uh, under Judaism, they would share the same faith. Not only were they sharing on this journey, but according to uh, uh, Quill and Priscilla, uh, they would be of the same faith of Paul. And uh, there's something about worshiping together with those that are in same faith that we can have an agreement with. And that's how we can be in one mind, one heart, one accord. Uh, we can have all that together, that, that commonality of this shared faith. Uh, uh, and, and so, uh, uh, matter of fact, we find that in many of the epistles that Paul writes, he talks a lot about uh, you know Aquila and, and Priscilla there. Why? Because they're in that shared journey. They have that shared faith. And you and I here in this place, uh, same thing, shared journey. This is how the method works. This is how, how God uses and pulls us together in this journey. And then he, he, he gives us that commonality of faith that we can come together and we can discuss and share in and preach and, 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 and just do this all together. And so I want you to see this, that Paul, who may have seemed like a nomadic person, a, a Paul who traveled on these missionary journeys, he understood that he could not do this alone. Now, uh, we, we have shared journeys in this place. We have a shared faith in this place. And watch this. They even got to the point where Aquila and Priscilla had a, a shared interest. 
Uh, they were tent makers. And so, uh, again, I, I don't think it was happenstance that, that God, had met, uh, God had allowed Paul to meet them. Uh, they shared that same interest together as, as tent makers. And, and so I, this is how Paul had supported himself by making tents. He had, uh, he, many times he had said that he didn't preach for money and uh, didn't want that to be uh, what people saw him as. It was a matter of principle in Paul's life to support himself and, and make the tents there. But notice this, he found some uh, some people there. And listen, uh, this is our inner circle that we have. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about a clique, but, uh, but we got to have some people in our inner circle that has the same interest that we can share. And so uh, as as he could, I'm sure, said and tell the stories of tent making uh, to, uh, to Aquila and Priscilla. They had stories themselves of the times they had made tents. And, and man, they could just share that. So uh, you see how Paul shares. You see, it's a life of sharing. It's, it's not an individual life. It's, it's not a you know, go by myself life. But literally, <laughs> Paul loves this idea of, of sharing life with others and doing life with others and, and then sharing the gospel with others and, uh, and, and not keeping that to himself. And, and so that is a, a great reminder of us that we're on this shared journey, that, we're on, we, that we share this faith that are here. And for some of us, we can find others that have the same interests that, that, that we do. And so, uh, you know, he, he, uh, Paul had actually received, uh, uh, like from Philippi, he had received support from the church and things like that. But it wasn't what, you know, Paul wasn't doing that on his own. The church supported him in that, in that way. So he even had the support group of the churches that are there. And so, uh, again, I, I want you to think about our church, and I want you to think about those, uh, uh, those abilities that we have here in our shared journey, our shared faith, and our, our shared interest. Now, watch this. Now, Paul, when he went into the cities, uh, uh, as I said, church was always important to Paul. Uh, and every time so far that we've seen on the missionary journeys, Paul always went into the synagogues. He always went into the, into the church there, and, and the Bible would say that, that he, would, he would argue, argue or, or share with them, or reason in verse, let's, let's just read those first three verses, you'll see the sharing, and then in verse four, you'll see the reason. Verse one, it said, after these, Paul departed from Athens and, and came to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born of Pont Pontius, lately come from Italy, and his wife Priscilla. Why? Because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews to be kicked out of Rome, and they came unto him, and because he was of the same craft, see that he was a tent maker of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. There's the commonality that was there. Now look at verse 4. He goes into the synagogue, and he reasoned in the synagogue, how many Sabbath? Every Sabbath you find Paul teaching in the synagogue. The one thing that I'll say about Paul that I hope all of us have is that's tenacity. Paul has some tenacity about him. You, you got to understand in Paul's life, he's been run out of town and beaten because of the tenacity that Paul has. And so nobody is going to hold him or keep him from going to the synagogue. I mean, you can threaten to beat him. And by the way, they make an example out of one here. They beat one here, we see. Uh, but Paul's tenacity was, was one that, and Paul, and, and I really believe this because it says that Paul reasoned with them. Paul would go to like Athens and he would sit with the philosophers of that day, the thinkers of that day, and, and he would literally uh, sit and reason with them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and can I share this? I know the gospel is for your heart, but I'm telling you the gospel is also for your mind. Amen. There's things we need to think on. There's things that we need to talk about. And there's things that we need to discuss. And, and we need to sit down and have Jesus meetings, right? We need to have those come to Jesus meetings where we can expand our minds and we can reason with one another. And that we don't get so, so, so narrow-minded in our faith and in our belief that we, we, we literally become unteachable. And, and that's really where Paul, the tenacity of Paul was that he understood that there was thinkers and philosophers. And, and he needed to challenge the minds of those people. And that the gospel really is, it, it will really work on that. Remember I told you, what's the battlefield of the devil? The mind. So if, if the battlefield of the devil is our mind, he can't get our hearts if we belong to Jesus. This battlefield of the devil, then we've got to counter that. And that's why the Bible says that we've got to have the mind of Christ. Amen. We've got to counter it. And so we've got to think like Jesus. And we've got to talk like Jesus. And we've got to, we've got to sit down and reason. You know, it's great when we have questions and we can sit down and, and we can discuss things and we can come to an agreement 
and, and we can have things settled in our minds. Because when you settle things in your mind, your faith ends up growing when it's settled in your mind. And so I love the tenacity of Paul. I, I love the fact that no matter what happens to him, uh, whether it's in Thessalonica, whether it's in Athens or you find him at uh, Ephesus, it doesn't matter whether you find him before a governor like Felix or you find him, uh, you know, uh, before uh, Festus or you find him before King Agrippa, thou almost persuaded me, me to, to be a Christian. What was he doing? He was working on the mind of, uh, of King Agrippa. He was reasoning with King Agrippa and Agrippa looked at Paul and said, man, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. He was working on the mind. And so I love that tenacity. Don't you ever quit? You keep on keeping on. You do what God's called you under the power of the Holy Spirit. You have some tenacity about your church life and who you are. We're in this together, right? We've got this common journey together, a shared journey, a shared faith, a shared interest. But have some tenacity. I, if, 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 if you walk around all the time and look like you sucked on a lemon, don't nobody want that. I tell people all the time when uh, people talk about pity parties. I don't need to invite, invite me to a pity party. I don't want to come to a pity party, do you? Do you want to be in a pity party? No. We need to have that tenacity of God. We want to, we want to have that, that, that supernatural events in our life. And that's exactly what we see in Paul. We see this tenacity that, that he literally says. And, and matter of fact, let's, let's look at this verse in verse 4. And he reasoned this tenacity to stay in the synagogue every Sabbath. That tenacity to go back and to go back and to go back and to go back and share. And listen, and persuaded. He persuaded them. He, he literally began to get them to think. He persuaded the Jews and, and the Greek. And so, uh, again, in this reasoning process of the mind, Paul has some success there uh, as, as, as he begins to talk to them and persuades the, uh, the Jews and the Greek. Now watch this. I told you that Paul had this support system and he had left Timothy and Silas back in Macedonia because under the cover of darkness he had to get out of town. They were trying to kill him. The, the people at Thessalonica had been stirred up and they wanted to kill Paul. Uh, and, and so he finally gets here. When he gets here at, at Corinth, he finally gets uh, Timothy and Silas to come with him. He finally gets them there. Uh, and, and so in, in verse 5 it says this, And when Silas and, and, and Timotheus were come from Macedonia... Paul was pressed in his spirit. You know what it done? It just, I, they just encouraged him more. And this tenacity that he had, he's just, he's more encouraged. And so following the arrival of, uh, of Timothy and Silas, uh, they, they come from Macedonia. We find here the tenacity of Paul. Well, here's another T. The tenacity of Paul turns into the teamwork. It turns into teamwork with them. And so again, how we understand this journey that you're on is not, a journey by yourself. It, it is that's what's so great about church. Why do I need to go to church? Because you have that support system uh, of shared faith, shared journey, you know, shared interest, all of these things that come together. And that we can come under tenacity and, and serve the Lord that way. Uh, but but then again, we, we gotta have that support group around us. We, if we ever get isolated by ourselves, that's a dangerous place to be. And so we got to have that teamwork. See, I can't do this by myself. You can't do what you need to do by yourself. It takes the teamwork there. And Paul understands this. And matter of fact, when, when, when Timothy and Silas come, they come back. And, and you know what they do? They bring good news regarding the church at Thessalonica. And Thessalonica was where they were trying to kill Paul. And, and they come back and they say, Paul, you ain't going to believe how well the church is doing and that just encourages Paul, this teamwork that, uh, that he gets so that uh, his spirit is renewed and God's spirit began. Notice what I said, Paul was pressed in his spirit. Paul's pressed in his spirit. There's a, a renewal, there's a strength in numbers, there's a strength in teamwork. Sometimes when we can't, we feel like we can't do it, you know, we can't get there by ourselves. There are those that can come and help us along to help strengthen us in our journey that we're going through. And so we find the teamwork that is there. Now, watch this. And teamwork, because Paul was successful in the teamwork and inviting others to come in and, and sharing his life with other people and sharing with the churches and, you know, Athens and all those places that he was with. Paul has a testimony. I want you to see the testimony that is there. You know, all of us, we could go tonight and, and I could share, you know, share your testimony. And those of us that put our faith and trust in, in Jesus, we, 
uh, we, we have a testimony. Now, uh, that, that's what happens in Paul's life. Paul, Paul who, who could have been a little defeated because he didn't get to do in Athens what he wanted to do, he comes, he hears the good news from Paul and Silas. He's now got a, a team around him. He's got Aquila and Priscilla that they have this common interest that he can have these conversations with. And so now Paul, who is renewed in his spirit, uh, is, is able to have a testimony of his life. And, and Paul can literally see this as how God's being good to him. God's being good to him. Matter of fact, we're going to see how Paul kind of gets down a little bit in this. Because in this testimony that Paul has, especially the, with, the, with the good news that comes out of Thessalonica that is there. And, uh, matter of fact, again, this is where Paul writes 1 Thessalonians. He gets, he gets under the power of the Spirit and, uh, and he's renewed. And, and so uh, those that had run him out of Thessalonica, and those men that had hunted him down, he turns around and he writes a letter back to the church there. And, he, and you go back and read 1 Thessalonians, he finds joy in and all that the church has been able to accomplish there. And this is what he says. He said, man, even in your trials, it has uplifted me that you've been able to go through the trials that you have. And that, that, you know, that, that Timothy comes to me and says, you're doing well. And so I, I, have, this, uh, I have this joy in my heart and it's, it's re-strengthened me. And so uh, he has this testimony of, 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 of the church and, and God and people and, and, and journeys and interests and tenacity and teamwork. And all of this is working together to strengthen Paul. Matter of fact, it works so well. Revival or riot. Every time Paul preaches, revival or riot. It works so well that here comes the conflict. Here comes the criticism. See, I want you to know that when we, we get to that place where God wants us, don't think the devil is just going to lay down and quit. Don't think that the devil is going to try to work on that mind, that battlefield of our mind. When we're trying to have the thoughts of Jesus, don't think that the devil is not going to try to slide in there. And so in this testimony of, 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 of God, and matter, matter of fact, look at verse uh, Verse 5 there. It says, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in his spirit, and look at this, and testified to the Jews, because this is what Paul said, only God can do something like this. Only God can do something. This is a God thing. This is a God thing. And so notice there, it says that, that he literally had a testimony. He testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. It's a God thing. Well, you know when those kinds of statements are made and you know when things are going well, you know what's going to happen, right? You know conflict is coming. Because, listen, they're doing okay as long as Paul's not mentioning Jesus Christ. They're, listen, everything is going good until he's sitting in the synagogue and he's arguing with people and reasoning with people because verse 6 <coughs> says this, and when they opposed themselves, when they opposed him and blasphemed uh, look at this. He shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your head. I am clean from henceforth. I'll just go to the Gentiles. The Jews didn't want to listen to it. They didn't want to hear it. And so here comes that, uh, that conflict. Paul meets this opposition. And I, 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 Paul gets... Paul kind of defeated in Athens. He has this uptime with Timothy and, and Silas. He, he has some success. He's going and sharing with them. But then he has that downtime. He has that, that time that seems like somebody comes and knocks his feet out from under him. And, and so uh, once again, uh, Paul could have very well said, well, guess what? Oh, me. Oh, me. The Jews blaspheme. They, they're like those that were in Antioch. That Paul had run across. And so uh, here's what he done. He says, look, you may, you're you not going to keep me from sharing the gospel. I, I, I'll just go to, to another people group. I, I, I'll just go to the Gentiles. And, and so the tenacity of Paul is one that he's not going to let conflict defeat him to the, to the point that he just gives up. So many times in our life, we just want to give up. We just, you know, it's conflict. It's hard. It's not easy anymore. It's not fun anymore. Can I tell you, in 34 years of ministry, I've had some time. This hasn't been real fun. In 34 years of ministry, I've had some, I've had some difficult times and difficult situations and difficult people in 34 years. But I can't quit. Because God is, has called us, and, and that's for, for everyone. Because here's what, here's what Paul has learned, and then I want you to learn tonight. If you hadn't heard anything else I've shared tonight, here, here is the basis of what makes Paul 
um, and, and that makes him successful in a time where he meets the conflict. Okay? Here, here it is right here. Because the Bible tells us in, in verse 6, 7, these oppress, they, 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 uh, they oppose, uh, they blaspheme, he shakes off his raiment, raiment. verse 7, he departs then and enters into a, a certain man's house, he leaves out of synagogue. By the way, he don't have a real far walk. He leaves the synagogue, reasoning with the Jews, they don't, want to, they don't want to listen to him, he just walks next door. That's a long walk, eh? Look at this. He departed this and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, and whose house joined hard, it was next to the synagogue. Now you say, well, well, Paul, what good did you do? Paul, there's a lot of conflict. You stirred up a lot of stuff. Verse 8. So there was Jews in there who had listened to Paul, and they didn't want to have anything to do with it. But the guy who was over the synagogue, he was listening too. Look at verse 8. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, he believed on the Lord. See, even in opposition, the gospel bore fruit. Can I share this with you tonight? This is what I, I put. Trust God's plan. Just trust God's plan. It, it, it didn't make sense to Paul. Uh, I mean, he's struggling there. He, he, had his, he had his time at Athens and he comes here and and, 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 you know, and, and they don't want to receive him. They don't want to listen to him in the synagogue. He comes every Sabbath with this tenacity that he has. He gives the testimony of Jesus Christ and how good God is and this is a God thing. And So he leaves and he goes to this house next door. And yet, under all of that conflict, the gospel still bears fruit. Why? Because it was all part of God's plan. So, trust God's plan. Matter of fact, it says there in verse 8, it's not just Crispus. Watch this. Verse 8, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. Amen. Crispus goes back and he shares with all the house. And we see the seeds that's been planted by Paul and the fruit that is there. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. They might not have in the synagogue. Those Jews might not have. But there were others out there through Crispus and others that began to hear and they began to believe. See, even in conflict. That's why I told you the message will stand even when the messenger is messed up. And, and so many, many of the Corinthians hearing believed and, and they're baptized. Just like, you know what? This reminds me of Paul's life in Jerusalem. It reminds me of Paul in Samaria. It, it, it reminds me of, of Paul later on says, uh, uh, there was a few that I, I, I baptized myself <coughs> along the way. And so we find then this trust God's plan. I, tonight I want you to trust God's plan. It may not turn out like you thought, but trust God's plan. That's what Paul did. He just trusted God's plan. Now, the third point that I want to make is this. He spends 18 months. It's the longest he's been able to stay somewhere, isn't it? 18 months that he, he stays at Corinth. And in, in the midst, did you hear what I said? In the midst of opposition. And in the midst of opposition... Paul and his companion find success in preaching the gospel so that he's able to stay there 18 months. Notice this. Because if Paul had been down a little bit, and maybe he was, I, I kind of sense this, the conflict that has happened, he's going to trust God's plan. Let's look at verse 8, or verse 9 and verse 10. Look at verse 9 and verse 10. Crispus and his family that was baptized, people were baptized and baptized as others that are saved. And if Paul had have been down, and, and tonight maybe you may be feeling a little down, maybe you're tired, maybe you give out, you burn out, maybe it don't make sense, maybe it didn't turn out the way that you thought. All of these things, God's got a plan and, and, and trusting God's plan. But look at, look at, look at verse, verse 9 and 10. Then spake the Lord to Paul, not by a vision. Don't you be afraid. You keep speaking. Listen to that. Isn't that great? And the conflict that he was having, look at what it said, be not afraid, but speak. Matter of fact, don't you hold your peace. You, every day of your life, Paul, you go out there and you speak and you preach and, 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 and you, you put your trust in God's plan, right? Because here's the thing, not only can we trust in God's plan, but we can trust God with the weight of, of our burdens, with the weight of your burdens, 
And so Paul, who would be burdened about those that was there, and he just said, I'll, I'll go to the Gentile. Listen, the, the weight of Paul that was there, this is what, what God said. Don't, don't you quit. You just keep on. You, 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 you preach. You don't be quiet. The next verse, verse 10, and he goes on this way. Look at, why, why is that possible? Because here's God's plan. Here, here is what God is doing in Paul's life. For I am with thee, and no man, man you, listen, a guy who's been run out of town as many times Paul had, people have threatened to kill him. I, I, I guarantee Paul loved to hear these words. Look at, look at 10. For I am with thee, and no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Paul, you don't even realize my plan and how many people I have in this city that will protect you and take care of you. Trust God with the weight of your burdens. Carry your burdens to the Lord. Don't, don't be afraid. Listen, don't, don't remain silent. I, I am with you. I, I, no one's going to hurt you. No one's going to attack you. And, 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 and I know this, listen, this is the foreknowledge of God. We see the foreknowledge of God. The foreknowledge of God is what brings our success. That's how we can be successful. The, the Lord knew that there were many souls that were there who obeyed the gospel or would obey the gospel. And none would hurt him. Because of men, check this out, like a man like Gallio. Watch this. Those in the synagogue, they didn't like what Paul was teaching. They have a problem with Paul. And so they just want to carry him. They want to, once again, they want to carry him, find something wrong with him. Let's get this guy out of here. Let's kill this guy. Let's do whatever we need to to stop this guy. Paul and the burdens that he's got, the Lord says, you just keep right on preaching. Matter of fact, verse 11, God was with him so much, that's how we get to the 18 months. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And his place of conflict. Verse 12. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord, with one accord against Paul and brought him before Gallio to a judgment seat. Look at this. They bring him to Gallio. Now, Gallio probably didn't know a, a whole lot about Paul, but this is God's plan. Because here's what, here's what we got to do. Not only can we put our weight, our burdens on God, and, and, and not only can we trust in God's plan, but I want you to understand that God works in our relationships. God works in the lives of people and get the people in our life that we need. And we come across these people that we need and we can share life again. This is where we get that journey. Listen, he's, he's come across Aquila and Priscilla. He's got Timothy and Silas. He's now got Crispus and his family on the side. And there's others in the, in, in the community or in the city that have been saved. And they literally now, they bring him before the proconsul there. And so I want you to see this, that there really wasn't a relationship and yet God made this relationship happen between Gallio and Paul. The Jews brought Paul up on charges before Gallio. All right? But notice this. In, in the Spirit of God, Gallio says, I'm not going to listen to this. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do what you're asking me to do. I'm not going to be the bad guy in all of this. Verse 12, and when Gallio was deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, this fellow persuaded men. Yeah, he did. He absolutely done that. Persuaded men to worship God. That's what he done. But notice they said contrary to our law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Paul was about to give his defense. Paul was about to say what he needs to say. Gallio said unto the Jews, verse 14, if it was a matter of wrong or wicked, lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. Uh, if it was something wicked or, or something lewd, then, then, then I would say, here, not listen to it. But watch this. But if it be a question of words and names and your law, you handle it. You handle it. You look ye to it yourself, for I will be no judge of such matter. There's an instant relationship between Paul and Gallio. Because Gallio was to do the right thing. Matter of fact, look at verse 16. I like this. Gallio said, Gallio said by the way, y'all go and get out of here. Go and get out of here. Get out of here. You're, you're talking foolish. Can, can I share this? You can't talk to foolish people. 
You can't talk to foolish people. Matter of fact, the only way to talk to foolish people is get down on their level. Is that where you want to be? On the level of a foolish person? Gallio won't get down on their level. He, this is foolish. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to play your foolish games. Now, if you want to have an intellectual discussion, we'll do that. But I, I, I'm not going to play your games in the names and the name calling and law. And I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stoop to your level. By the way, y'all just go ahead and get on out of here. <coughs> get out of here. Of course, they didn't like that. Matter of fact, verse 17, and all the Greeks took Sosthenes. He was probably a believer, right? Took Sosthenes, chief ruler of the synagogue, and they beat him. We'll, 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 we'll take out our anger on somebody. We're going we're to take our anger out on somebody. We've got to handle the relationships for Paul. From Aquila to Priscilla to Timothy to Silas to Gallio to Crispus, God will handle your relationships. And how things come together and what, what we can do through those relationships. And so Paul's able to stay at Corinth for a long, long time. Paul's ministry at Corinth and, and, his, and, his, and his ministry there, we see the dedication and the methodology as he preached the gospel. And, and, and here's the thing, what he, what he did there, God used, uh, and we find a response to those that heard the gospel, even in a time of conflict. Can I share this with you tonight? Whether we are servants of the Lord like Paul and his, uh, and his companion, or are we seeking to learn the truth like the others? You might be here tonight, listen, and, 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 and we're, the, we're the Paul or whatever. You know, we, we have our, our faith and, and we understand all of this together and how we do this together. But there, there may be some here that was like what Paul come in contact with, those who needed to know the truth, those who needed to hear the truth. And tonight what you've seen is exactly uh, what we have in this world. We have those that laugh and scoff and say, I don't believe that kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and yet God is, has got a plan. God's got a plan for you tonight. Seek that plan. Look for that plan. Get in that plan. Do, do God's plan. That's exactly Paul and his tenacity was doing God's plan. And, 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 and not only that plan that was there, but, but he literally trust God with the weight of his burdens. And, and everything that was going wrong in Paul's life, uh, uh, Paul, uh, listen, God just ensures him, hey, I got you. I'm, I'm going to take care of you. You just keep speaking. You keep doing. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. And so tonight on that, you know, that weight of burdens that you have, you come and, and you give them to the to the Lord also. And then in those relationships, some, sometimes those relationships are fractured or whatever the case may be. God can use those relationships to, 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 to do a purpose and, and have a purpose. And uh, like Paul, who uh, Galileo probably would have actually been an enemy of Paul, but he says, no, I'm not, I'm not going to get in that foolishness. I'm, I'm not going to stoop to that level. I'm not going to do it that way. Uh, and so uh, there's another friendship that, that happens with Paul and with God. But the greatest friendship you can have tonight is with Jesus Christ. The greatest relationship you can have tonight is with Jesus Christ. You bring your burdens, and you bring your heartaches, and you bring your struggles, and you bring your lostness, whatever the case may be. God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose. You come tonight and share in that plan and purpose. Heavenly Father, we.